Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how to use stabilization inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So here we have the original clip. You can see that this shot is pretty shaky, probably due to the cameraman walking around. And so we'd like to use the stabilization functions in order to smooth it out. So you can find stabilization while working on the edit page. If you go up to the inspector in the top right hand corner, there is a section here, which is enabled by default called stabilization. Now that doesn't mean that your video is automatically stabilized. You still need to hit this stabilize button in order to get stabilization to start happening. So if you'd like, you can get started just by leaving everything as its default setting and then going ahead and hitting stabilize. When you do that, it's going to say analyzing and it'll spend a minute depending on the length of your clip, to go through the clip, analyze what needs to be done, and then to try to automatically stabilize it for you based on your settings over here. Okay, so after the initial stabilization, you'll probably see that your clip zooms in a bit, depending on how shaky the original shot was. But if we hit play, it is going to look much smoother. There's gonna be a lot less janky camera movement, and hopefully you already have a decent stabilization going on. Now we may want to adjust the settings. So first off, the mode. If when you do the stabilization in perspective mode, you find that you don't get great results, you can try turning it down to similarity or translation mode. So the differences in here is that perspective is the most complicated, similarity is one step below that, and then translation is basic stabilization. Specifically, translation only works on pan and tilt, and then similarity adds in zoom and rotation, and then perspective, and then perspective as the name would imply, adds perspective as a variable for it to start accounting for. So obviously the more things that the stabilization is accounting for, the more things that can go wrong. So if it ever doesn't look quite right, you can lower it down from perspective to another mode. But if it seems to work just fine, just leave it on perspective mode because then that'll track across all five of those variables. Now, in addition to that, there's some settings down here. First off, camera lock. What this will do is disable cropping ratio and smooth. So now the stabilization will focus solely on removing camera movement from the shot. We can go ahead and hit stabilize and take a look at how that will look here. So here's how this shot looks with the camera lock enabled. So the next setting here is zoom and usually you're going to want to leave this checked because if you don't allow your shot to zoom in then you're going to get these blanking areas where you have black space around your shot depending on how shaky the original camera is you'd get more or less blanking. So what stabilization will do by default is that it'll try to even out the camera movement but on these edges you can see it's very shaky here so it'll zoom in so that you never see these edges in the final clip. Because you would almost never show these random black edges in an actual video, I would think that you would only disable zoom if you actually have a manual process that you want to do in order to control the zoom or the framing of your shot so that you can get rid of those edges in another way. Uh, otherwise, I would just leave zoom on. So we can uncheck camera lock if we want to bring back cropping ratio and smoothing. So the cropping ratio is setting how much of the edges, left, top, bottom, and right, you're willing to crop inwards, basically removing from the final shot in order to achieve your stabilization. So if you set the cropping ratio to 1.0, it's not gonna crop at all, but your stabilization will probably look pretty weak. So once we stabilize with a cropping ratio of one, you can see that the entire shot as we defined it without the stabilization is going to be visible. We can hit play, but the trade-off of having a high cropping ratio is that the shot isn't going to stabilize very well since normally we take away from those top left, bottom and right edges in order to fake the camera being stable. So the lower we put this, the more of the clip it's allowed to take away from in order to achieve the stabilization. So generally, if you have a lower cropping ratio, it's gonna look a lot more stable like this. Now, even if you set a super low cropping ratio, it's only going to do those crops if it's actually necessary. So that really depends on how much shakiness there is in the actual shot. So if I set it to like 0.5 here, then it's probably gonna look about the same. And you can see here, it actually does look exactly the same because that much cropping just wasn't necessary. Um, so the next setting here is smoothing. So the higher your smooth value is, the less jittering there's going to be in the final shots. So if you want the movements to flow together very nicely, then you can increase the smooth value. 
The trade-off is that having more smooth is going to generally require the stabilization to zoom in further. So if we hit stabilize here with the highest smooth value, you can see that it zoomed in more than normal. But if we hit play, then the movements should look smooth and the camera movement shouldn't be that noticeable. Of course, you can go all the way and make that a smooth of 1.0. But when you get to this level, it may be cropping away just way too much of the original clips. So in, in this case, the woman is not even in the shot. So that's probably not going to be acceptable. But if we hit play, the movement itself is rather smooth. So resetting the smooth and the cropping ratio back to their defaults, we get more of a typical stabilization. Okay, so lastly is the strength value. So this is a multiplier. So if we take the strength and reset it to 0.5, then that means that the stabilization is going to be acting at half of its full power which basically means you're going to get half the stabilization and half of the original shot, which is going to be pretty close to saying you do half of the stabilization and half of the original shot. So if we stabilize with that 0.5 strength, there will be a little bit of stabilization, but it's going to look a lot more like the original clip, obviously. Now, there's one interesting thing about the strength value, which is that you can actually go to zero and below zero. So if you go under zero strength, indicating it basically in having a negative value, then you can actually reverse the stabilization, which means instead of stabilizing, you're going to be destabilizing it. You're going to be taking those camera movements in the original shot and exaggerating them. So if we crank the strength all the way down to negative one and we hit stabilize now, then what's going to happen is that the shot is going to look very, very janky, very jittery. So with a strength of negative one, it's going to look kind of like this. It's very chaotic. It's jittery. And it pretty much takes whatever movements were in the original shot for the camera and basically doubles it. Okay, so one more thing I do want to point out about stabilization is that you can also access the tools over on the color page. So if we go over to color, you can see here for the tracker tab, the second dot in the middle here. And you can see the value for the different properties that the stabilizer is tracking. You can also stabilize from this tab as well. So you have the same settings, being able to choose in this drop down, perspective similarity or translation, zoom, camera lock, strength, smooth, and cropping ratio. And there's also bypass stabilization. So if you want to temporarily hide all of your stabilization, you can do that here in one click just by doing that. So now we can see it with the original shot and we can re-enable the stabilization to see how it looks when it's stabilized. Okay, and lastly, if you're used to the old stabilizer, that existed in previous versions of Resolve, you can click here and switch into classic stabilizer mode. I'm not going to be covering the classic stabilizer, but if you had a need for it, you can find it there. So in a nutshell, that is how you can find and use the stabilization tools inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.